Published in 1973 and recipient of the Newbery Medal, Paula Fox's children's book, The Slave Dancer, is a compelling historical novel. It revolves around 13-year-old Jesse Allier, who finds himself in a harrowing position that exposes him firsthand to the African slave trade. Set in New Orleans at the beginning of 1840, the story unfolds amidst a rainy celebration, where intoxicated riverboat workers and slaves revel together. Jesse lives in this area with his mother and sister, but one fateful evening, he falls victim to a kidnapping. Captured and taken aboard the Moonlight, a slave ship, Jesse is forced to play the fife to keep the enslaved Africans dancing, ensuring their physical strength upon arrival at their destination. He is also expected to perform various tasks aboard the ship. During the crossing to Africa, Jesse strives to gather as much information as possible about the ship and its operations. The captain, Cawthorn, appears deranged, the first mate is merciless, and the sailors are solely driven by the desire to profit from the slave trade. Upon reaching Africa, they sail along the coast, and the captain employs a small boat to meet with African chiefs involved in selling people into slavery. Witnessing the abhorrent treatment of the enslaved individuals shocks Jesse to his core. Once the slaves are brought onto the ship, they are crammed together in the hold, stacked on top of one another with utmost cruelty. Any slave who falls ill is immediately thrown overboard to prevent the spread of disease among the others. Tragically, many are still alive when they meet this fate, becoming prey to sharks or drowning in the vast ocean. Jesse is profoundly disturbed by the horrors unfolding around him but remains resolute in his determination to survive and find his way back home to his family. The Slave Dancer by Paula Fox offers a poignant exploration of this dark chapter in history. As seen through the eyes of a young protagonist navigating a treacherous journey while grappling with the injustice and inhumanity of the African slave trade. As the arduous journey to America persists, Jesse's growing hatred encompasses everything around him, including the slaves who serve as a reminder of his own captivity on the ship. Refusing to play the fife, he retreats to his quarters but is promptly dragged back on deck and subjected to a flogging for his disobedience. The punishment only intensifies his contemplation of the atrocities unfolding before him. He witnesses the sailor's heartless demeanor toward the slaves and loathes himself for participating in the whole ordeal by playing the fife. As the voyage progresses, conditions deteriorate further. The crew indulges in drunkenness, the ship becomes increasingly filthy, and discipline slackens. In a tragic incident, a slave attacks Nicholas Spark, one of the ship's mates, who responds by shooting and killing him. The sailor's only concern is the loss of potential profit from the sale of the slave. When the ship nears Cuba, another vessel approaches, instilling fear in the captain as both British and American ships patrol the waters to combat the slave trade. The crew begins disposing of their chains and, subsequently, the slaves, tossing them overboard into the depths of the ocean. Helpless to intervene, Jesse witnesses even young children meeting this horrific fate. However, Jesse manages to save a boy of his own age and hides with him in the slave hold, concealed from the gaze of the passing ship. As a fierce storm arises, the ship starts to sink. After a few days, Jesse and the boy emerge from their hiding place to discover the vessel abandoned, with the crew members either dead or missing. Using a part of the mast as a makeshift flotation device, they swim towards the shore. They eventually reach Mississippi, where they encounter an escaped slave, an elderly man living in the woods. He offers them sustenance, aids in their recovery, and arranges for others to escort the enslaved boy to the north, where he can find freedom. The escaped slave provides Jesse with detailed directions for his three-day journey back to New Orleans, urging him to keep their encounter a secret to prevent the man from being recaptured and returned to a life of enslavement. Jesse follows the path and eventually reunites with his mother and sister. However, the harrowing experiences he endured have forever transformed him. He abandons his aspirations of wealth and rejects any association with the remnants of slavery. Over time, Jesse decides to pursue a career as an apothecary and settles in Rhode Island, a state where slavery has been abolished. He sends for his mother and sister, and they join him, creating a new life far from the shadows of their past. Although he occasionally reminisces about the South, Jesse remains haunted by the fate of the enslaved boy he had befriended but never learns of his ultimate outcome. During the Civil War, Jesse fights for the Union, driven by his first-hand encounter with the horrors of slavery. 
he marries and establishes a family of his own, seeking solace in the embrace of domestic tranquility. However, one lasting impact of his ordeal aboard the slave ship is his aversion to music. Its melodies and rhythms remind him of the forced dances of the enslaved, evoking painful memories that he can no longer bear to confront. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.